My name is Hannah Peterson, and I chose to do my project on Lee for Many Syndrome. I chose this genetic condition because it was one on the list that I'd never heard of, and doing preliminary research, I was really surprised by the effect this disease has on people. Lee for Many Syndrome is a very rare genetic condition where individuals affected are predisposed to many different types of cancer. This is unlike a lot of other genetic conditions I researched, because most only cause one or two main types of cancer, but this one has a fairly long list. It's characterized by a young age of onset, with 50% of people diagnosed with cancer before the age of 30. It's caused by a mutation in the TP53 gene, which is a very important tumor suppressor gene. The P53 gene is responsible for apoptosis, DNA repair, and control over the cell cycle. So when this gene isn't working properly, the body isn't able to kill those damaged cells and tumors begin to form. People who don't have Lee for many syndrome develop cancer from mutations that happen in both copies of the same gene pair in the same cell. The chances of people getting two mutations in the same gene is very low, but as we age, the mutations accumulate, so there's a higher chance of getting cancer as you get older. People with Lee for many syndrome are born with a mutation in the P53 gene in every cell of their body, so only one mutation in a gene would cause cancer, which is why individuals with this condition can get so many different types. Lee for many syndrome is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, which means that only one copy of the mutated gene is required to be affected by this disease. Looking at the picture on the right, there is a 50% chance of passing the mutated gene onto children, and the affected children only have one copy of the non-working gene. Most people who have this condition have one normal copy of the P53 gene and one mutated copy inherited from their parents. However, around 25% of people with the syndrome don't have any kind of family history and just had a new mutation of the gene. Because Lee for many syndrome is an inherited genetic condition most of the time, it's important to have cancer genetic counseling before even initiating the testing process. In order to be tested for this disease, there are some criteria that genetic counselors look at. If someone is diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 30, they'll be tested for this condition. They also look at patients with an early onset age of GI cancers and people diagnosed with an adrenocortical carcinoma will be tested no matter what age they're diagnosed. It's important for people with Lee for many syndrome to have access to long-term genetic counseling as well as siblings and offspring being tested. In my research, I found two major testing methods that genetic counselors use for Lee for many. The first one being a deletion duplication analysis done by a multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification. An MLPA uses PCR to detect abnormal copy numbers of DNA or RNA sequences and is able to detect differences in only one nucleotide. Test results are available within 24 hours, which is desirable for both the patient and the genetic counselor and physicians. Genetic counselors of individuals with Lee for many would work closely with oncologists and other family physicians to decide the best course of treatment. There aren't too many ethical issues surrounding this consistent condition, but the biggest one I saw was testing of unaffected children. Testing minors was very controversial for a long time, but it's considered more often now because of better screening protocols and counseling available. For individuals with Lee for many syndrome, offspring will always be tested because of the 50% chance they have of receiving the mutated gene. Another ethical issue is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, but this isn't a problem for only Lee for many patients. This test is available for high-risk couples, but it's controversial because of the considerations of terminating an affected pregnancy. A situation like this comes up in most inherited genetic conditions, and there are a lot of differing opinions out there. This is my work cited page with all of the sources I used. I enjoyed researching this genetic condition a lot, and I learned a lot about a disease I hadn't ever heard of before this class.